Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Anyway, today, Wednesday, September 18th, we had the much anticipated FOMC day where the Fed cut rates, overnight rates, by 50 basis points. The market's initial reaction was a big spike to the upside on all the indexes, mini stocks, and gold, as you can see here, but then it quickly petered out shortly after, then weakened quite a bit the rest of the day into the close with most of the major indexes closing down as well as gold. In the past, it, all, it hasn't always been a great thing for the market whenever the Fed cuts rates by a half a basis point, by 50 basis points. You can see this chart here by Brett. This is from Twitter. You can see one in January 2011 kind of in the middle of that bear market. The market still had another year and a half to go down. Then you had one in late 2007. Then, of course, we had that 2008 bear market. And there was one on March 3rd, 2020. The market then fell about three weeks, of course, before bottoming. As you know, we had so much money coming into the system and it was going to be a short-lived correction, which it was. Again, Another thing we had happen today with that slight new high, we made that wave five we were looking for. So it's possible we have a little completed wave five here and now at minimum have a deeper little ABC pullback. There is a demand zone here on the S&P down to around 15, five, 5,550, roughly matches the 50% FIB. There's also an open gap here right around 5,600. That's likely could be a target here in the short term. That said, Let's see what happens tomorrow. Sometimes the market has the opposite reaction after the FOMC. You know, the major indexes are still above major supports. We haven't, you know, we've hardly pulled back at all. So again, let's just see how things settle out here. And let's get started here. As I stated, my name is Matthew Fraley. I founded Breakpoint Trades 21 years ago in 2003. I've been doing technical analysis since at least 1997. So been doing this for a long time. Breakpoint Trades, where you provide advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and our passion, which is advanced mechanical trading systems, our 21 spy and ES mean reversion systems, our KISS systems, our volatility systems, you name it. So anyway, let's go and get back to this newsletter video at hand. This is our back and recorder for our website subscription service. If you're just a YouTube subscriber, you should really consider subscribing. Uh, that way you'll access five of our detailed newsletters per week, our dozens of actionable trade ideas, active community, and of course, you'll get trade notifications to our amazing trading signals. You don't get any of that on YouTube. Okay. Anyway, this is our back-end recorder for our subscription service. I'm going to get this recording started now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Wednesday September 18th newsletter. Tonight's newsletter, newsletter, as you can see, divided into six major sections. Same general theme as I always keep. And as far as the market, as you know, today was the much anticipated FOMC day. Market was trading mostly sideways into the FOMC and they lowered r overnight rates by 50 basis points. The market, the markets and gold's initial reaction was to pop hard on that, which it did for the first 30 minutes or so, but then it reversed and then worked lower into the close with most with the major indexes and most sectors closing slightly down. Okay. That said, sometimes the market has the opposite reaction follow, you know, the following day after the FOMC. So before we make any major conclusions, let's see what happens tomorrow. And like I said, we haven't lost any major supports or anything. We did have a fifth potential fifth wave high today, so it is possible we have, under the bullish scenario, some sort of wave two pullback. Okay. So as I state here in the short term technicals, we had potential five waves up as we've shown on the intraday time frames, 15 minute time frames. We could see a nice ABC pullback. Under a bullish case, it'd be wave two of five. A more bearish scenario would be the market put in a major top. But again, let's see what happens tomorrow. Way too early to 
even conclude something like that. So let's go and get started with things first off. Image number two. So here is a pretty cool chart. This is from Brett on Twitter. Give him credit. So what he shows here on the chart of the, S the NASDAQ anyway, the past three rate cuts when they lowered overnight rates by a half by 50 basis points or 0.5%. So you had one there on March 2020. The market, that was after the market topped, but the market then still sold off pretty hard for another three weeks before, of course, bottoming. Everyone knows why the market quickly bottomed there. You had so much money thrown into the market at that time. And, you know, it was just, it was going to go up. And plus, honestly, that was the start of all that inflation we had. All that money in the system and, of course, supply chain issues. But not surprised that that quickly bottomed, right? Then we had a 50-point race, uh, half-point rate cut on September 18th, 2007. So just before that market topped out before the big 2008 bear market. And we had a big correction there. And then you had one in January 2001. The market had already peaked out in March of 2020, but you still had another year, year and a half to go before that correction. And so we'll see how today ends up going. By the way, despite the fact that they lowered the overnight rate by a half percent, the 10-year treasury yield was up. Why is that? Remember, guys, the Fed does not control the 10 and 30-year treasury yield. That is controlled by the bond market. They only control overnight rates. And that's where you start, when the two move opposite to one another, that's when you start getting those yield inversions, right? Anyway, more on that. The other thing to consider is the yield curve, which you know is back at least the traditional yield curve, the 10-year divided by the two-year is no longer inverted. You know, I still, if, I've always been under the assumption that we are going to get recession with this. This has one, been one of the best predictors. I know the pundits on TV, CNBC, all that, keep talking about this soft landing. But I mean, this has been one of the best predictors in history, and I don't see how we don't eventually get one. Obviously, we're in election year, so, you know, We'll see what happens with that. But anyway, let's move on. Another admin comment, image number four. So here is one of our mean reversion systems. As you know, we had several mean reversion systems go along a couple weeks ago, all made nice trades. We still had one that was left open, the RSI 40 system on the MES futures. That closed out this morning for an excellent trade here. So if you look at the Trade table here, Th this particular system with two contracts closed out with almost a 1,600 point gain, okay? So far, it's made about $22,700 this year. So great trade on the system. Congrats if you're in this trade. Again, we had other mean reversion systems that exited previously, all for nice trades. And uh, again, excellent resource. So hopefully some of you guys took this. Even if you don't trade ES futures, you could have easily substituted one of the SPY-related ETFs, SPY, SSO, UPRO, or SPY options. It's whatever fits your style, but great trade. All the mean reversion systems are now back into cash. Okay, moving back to the general market. So image number five shows the index sector table, what transpired today and this week. So you can see, again, market was up nicely after the FOMC, which quickly reversed. You can see the slight moves down on the major indexes. The Russell closed flat, essentially. And for the week, we have a bifurcation here with the Russell up 1.2%, the S&P and NASDAQ down, and the Dow Jones slightly up. As far as the 21 market sectors, more were down than were up today, as you can see. No real big moves here, though. The biggest move I see is semiconductors and technology, which were down 1.1% to 0.9%, respectively. Otherwise, a lot of these moves are fairly small, you know, less than a percentage. And currency-wise, U.S. dollar came back off the lows. We have a potential positive divergent low, which I'll show you when we get to that section much further on, but up 0.09% today. Bitcoin slightly down today. It's still up for the week. Commodities almost all to the downside. The only exceptions were agriculture, which, by the way, the KISS High Performance System has a nice long going there, and sugar, which I highly doubt most of you are trading and precious metals were down as well. 
and the stocks are leading to the downside here. GDX down 1.1% versus 0.6% for the metal and down 2.6% versus for the week versus 0.7% for the metal. The stocks tend to lead. So we've been looking for at least some sort of intermediate top on the precious metals, especially gold, as a wave five of three. Maybe, maybe that's here. Again, we need confirmation, but it's possible. And like I said, the bond market, the 10-year and treasury yield were up nicely today, despite the fact that they lowered overnight rates. Finally, Item number six shows the economic news calendar. Like I said, we had the FOMC today. Tomorrow, Thursday, we have initial jobless claims. We'll see how that looks. See if it shows any weak weakening in the economy or not. Philly Fed, existing home sales, and natural gas inventories if you happen to trade UNG ETF. Moving on to the charts. Chart number seven, here is the NVIDIA. I've been showing this lately first one of the first charts, so I'll just keep that tradition. So you can see it's pulling back here. So we have a potential coil setting up, as you can see via the dotted trend lines. If this is a coil pattern, you would have essentially an A, B, C, D, and then maybe an E on a pullback, if that's the bullish case. Otherwise, you can see how it's been perfectly ping-ponging between these supply and demand zones. Rallied off the demand zone in early August, stalled at the supply zone in mid-August, rallied off the demand zone in early September. We got into the middle of the range, and again, we're essentially in the middle of the range here. Moving on, chart rate, right, here's the chart showing the five key major indexes. Again, as you know, a week and a half ago, they tagged the lower Bollinger Bands before finding support there. And you can see the Dow, S&P, roughly tagging the upper Bollinger Bands before reversing. Nice reversal candles on all the indexes today, essentially doji spinning top candles. Next chart, number nine, here's the daily S&P 500 KISS system, the KISS trend system. So you can see today's reversal, ugly candle. Otherwise, again, as far as the KISS system, no changes. It never did hit its smart trailing stop on that last correction, got pretty close, but it's, it's still long with the stop still currently there. Now under the bullish case, if this is a wave two pullback of wave five, we'd be looking for a higher low. So we'll see if we get that. Being an election year, stuff like that, definitely a potential for that. Next, chart number 10, here's the four time frames. A couple things I wanna point out to you guys. The daily up here in the upper left, remember we had the resistance cycle, all the, the, the mark 913, everything lined up there for a pullback in mid-August and we got it. We found support at the support cycle. On the half day, we found support at the support cycle and notice we had a resistance cycle yesterday. I don't know if Steve mentioned that, but we reversed right off of that so far, okay? And otherwise, ATR is now support on all these potential time frames. Next, chart number 11. Here's the standard daily S&P 500 chart. You can see today's Pinocchio move above resistance before pulling back, right? So, like I said, you know, pulling back off resistance, we're still way over the 90 MA, we're over the 20, so you can't get bearish, guys, until you start losing those moving averages. Like I said, um, sometimes the market has the opposite day after the FOMC, so let's not conclude too much today. And like I said, we're, we're still above all these moving averages, even short-term moving averages. Chapter 12, here's the S&P equal weighted. You can see reversing off this upper trend line. You do have some MACD divergence there. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Chapter 13, here's a 60 minute view of the S&P. So you can see today's spike to a new high, then reversal. Here I added a little lower trend line to watch. A break of that could lead to a pullback. That said, this horizontal line here, just over the 55.50 area, 55.60 roughly, you can see this has been important resistance, support. It is now support. So if we were to pull back in that area, I'd be looking for support. Charber 14, here's a 15 minute view. So you can, this is the wave count we've been showing. This nested one, two, wave one, two, uh, well, wave one, two, three, four, five with that last spike today. If that is correct, we could be looking at a little deeper pullback here. 
way to fill this open gap around around 5600 or maybe even into this demand zone but it could also just recover here and this count could shift all right but if we do pull back more here this could be a target area that said tonight futures are pretty good yes futures are recovered quite a bit they're up 40 points off the close low so they've recovered quite a bit we'll see how they look in the morning Chapter 15, here's another 15 minute view, just a clean chart, kind of shows you this open gap below around 55 or 5600. Next, chapter 16, here's the triple Q's KISS system. You can see today's reversal off the highs. This KISS system right now is currently flat. Some of the high performance intraday systems are long though. Okay, those are more active. Chapter 17, here's the four time frames. Again, similar to the S&P, perfect moves off the cycle on the daily, off the resistance cycle in August, bounce off the support cycle in September. And on the half day, price pulling back off the resistance cycle, etc. Also, we have a buy cycle on the 78 minute and futures are up tonight. So we'll see if that's the case tomorrow. Like I said, sometimes the market has the opposite reaction after the FOMC. I know I'm saying that like a broken record. But I just want to make that point. Chapter 18, here's the triple Qs. You can see today's slight poke above the little downtrend line here before reversal. Okay, that said, we are still above these moving averages. Not a pretty candle, but let's see the reaction tomorrow. Chapter 19, here's a half day chart showing demand and supply zone. You can see we got into that supply zone today where we found resistance. Again, these supply and demand zones are great guides to take low risk trade opportunities and you could see earlier in the month we bounced off that demand zone jabber 20 here's a 60 minute chart you can see the potential little wave five today before pulling back jabber 21 here's a 15 minute view you can see this count this nested one two one two one two three four three of five four five if that is a complete five then we could be looking at a nice little abc pullback at the very least that said here i added a little support trend line and this upper resistance so we'll see how it looks tomorrow like i said futures are up tonight but things can obviously change chapter 22 here's iwm small caps which managed to close flat today but Quite an ugly candle. You can see it had spiked out of the supply zone before pulling right back. You got a spinning top doji candlestick, and you got really two doji candlesticks in a row here. The broken downtrend line of this coil is now support, so we're still above that. And chart number 23, here's the two hour view. Again, you can see how we got through that supply zone before retracing. Quite a, quite a tail wick on this candle. Let's see what happens tomorrow. And that does it for the indexes, guys. Moving on, chapter 24, here's the VIX. Little move up in the VIX here, not surprising. Moved up with the market moving down. Chapter 25, here's that 60 minute chart of the VIX. We're following these gaps. VIX likes to fill the gaps. We never did fill the gap to the downside. And of course we have a gap to the upside there. So we'll see which one gets filled first. Moving on to the bond market, chapter 26, high yield corporate. Was up today, but big reversal, spinning top doji. Chapter 27, TLT 20 year bonds. This is the weekly chart pulling back a little bit this week so far. Reverse today with the FOMC. Chapter 28, here's the 10 year treasury yield. Like I said, it was up today, 1.2%. Got a nice divergent low on the MACD and some divergence on the RSI. And this was up despite the fact they lowered overnight rates by 50 basis point. Remember guys, the Fed does not control what the 10 year treasury yield does. That is controlled by bond traders. And we get divergences, that's when you can get problems such as yield curve inversions, etc. So we'll see what this does, but this can this bounced today. Chapter 29, here's the 10 year on the weekly. I've been showing this potential ABC correction from the October 2023 highs. And this has been playing out. You can see it's right at the upper portion of this demand zone and 144 week moving average. 
So it could potentially bottom in here and go up. How would the market behave if rate longer term rates start rallying? <laughs> Next. Here's a way to play a if the 10-year continues to bounce. And remember, the 10-year treasury yield is what closely mimics the uh, mortgage rates or mortgage rates mimic the 10-year. So TBT, if the 10-year continues to bounce, that's a way to play it. You can see the MACD divergence. Another way to play it would be SDP. That's the ultra short inverse ETF. Oh, actually, this is for utilities. I'm sorry. I thought it was for scratch that, guys. Let's move on. Let's move and look at some of these market sectors. Jarber 32, here's XLK Technology, down 0.9%. That was the second weakest sector today. Lower high here so far, but otherwise pulling back to this move and average group. You have the 20-day, 50-day, 9. So every, you got three moving averages right here, potential little support. Again, could this also form some sort of coil formation, perhaps? Which that's what this also suggests is possibly doing with these lower highs, higher lows, etc. Jabber 33, here's semiconductors also pulling back. This was the weakest sector today, down 1.15%. Jabber 34, here's a 15 minute chart of SOXS. That's the triple inverse ETF for semiconductors. This was wild action today. It kind of had an inverse head and shoulder pattern, sold off initially on the Fed, rallied back hard. It's got a nice little base here, pretty good volume patterns. But again, this is going to depend on how futures look tomorrow morning. So we'll see how this looks. One to pay attention to if the market does lose its gain here overnight in the futures and decides to sell off tomorrow. One to watch here. Following up in some of the other sectors, just going to look at a few of these guys. Here's the transports, they managed to still close slightly up today, but well off those highs. Look at that spinning top doji. Chapter 36, biotech, as you know, I like this chart. Really nice bullish looking chart. You can see today's highs stalling perfectly at the upper resistance trend line before pulling back. Okay, This confirms that upper trend line as important. You can see it's tested it one, two, three, four times. And really five, six if you want to count a couple of these that were quite close. So definitely confirming that is resistance. So the pattern still looks good unless it really starts to sell off hard here. We'll keep an eye on it. Chapter 37, here's the leveraged play for biotech, LABU. That's the triple long ETF. And you can see I've been showing this coil. Remember on the weekend I talked about this coil possibly being a wave D of an ABCDE triangle. Remember, Triangle coil patterns are five waves, A, B, C, D, E. This would be the bullish representation. But as I told you, if this is the correct count, you'd be looking for a pullback higher or low within the coil as a wave E. So maybe this plays out. Chapter 38, here's consumer staples. Remember, this is this sector has been super strong, good and going parabolic. You had this pretty good RSI divergence, MACD divergence building. Starting to leak a little oil here, still holding that 20 day though for now. But if it loses that, then I think this starts a correction at least down to the 50 day. And chapter 39, here's utilities. Nice pullback on utilities today, as you can see. Otherwise, still in a very strong uptrend for now. No MACD divergence, hasn't lost any big supports. Chapter 40, here's XLE Energy. This area has bounced back nicely over the last week or so. Rallied off that demand zone. And little doji candlestick today, struggling with these moving averages a little bit as expected, but nice rally off that support. Chapter 41, bio or oil services, same deal. Nice rally off the support and demand zone last week. Now this broken coil is potentially resistance. Pulling back a little bit off that today. And chapter 42, FXI, Chinese market ETF, Kind of a potential inverse head and shoulder patterns have been shown here. This too was up initially today before reversing. All right, that does it for the indexes Let's and sectors. Let's move on to commodities. Chapter 43, here's DBC, the commodity index, which was down about 0.64% today. You could see it was up initially before reversing. Now we'll see if this can form a higher low or not. It did recover that previous support. The previous week. 
Chart for 44, here's the weekly chart. Still up 0.8% for the week. Remember, had that Pinocchio move the previous week below support. Then it rebounded back above it. Chart for 45, crude oil, which is the energy market's been weak. Remember, this lost its coil trend line a couple weeks ago. It's bounced back here, but that broken coil trend line is now resistance. Chart for 46, natural gas, UNG, pulling back a little bit. You can see this horizontal rectangle pattern. Nice rally off that long-term support. And logical pullback off of this area. Chart for 47, copper, up today. St still struggling around this little resistance area. Otherwise, to me, it looks like a textbook ABC correction from those May highs. Chart for 48, DBA agriculture. So this is one of the strong areas in the commodity area. This continues up, up, and away. And uh, really been moving nicely here. I like the longer term charts. Let's take a look at those. Chart for 49, here's DBA on the monthly. So it's up 3% for the month. Going to been shown this chart for a while, this potential monthly bull flag. If this plays out over time, we could see this go much higher to these upper supply zones. That wouldn't be good for food inflation at the grocery store, would it? Chart for 40, 50, here's Bitcoin, which was slightly down today, but it's, it's up 3% for the week. And it is up here after hours, actually. This would be the bullish representation with that last low at 49,200 as a wave four. And we're eventually going to break out of this pattern as a wave five. So you want to keep an eye on Bitcoin here. You can see the MACD is recycled nicely back to zero where this is potentially support and could curl right back up. Chapter 51, here's US dollar down, as you can see, making a new low here. We do have a MACD divergence. This is a potential wave five down. You can see wave one, two, three, and you had an ABC bounce for a wave four, and we're now working on a five. This is important, guys, because once the dollar does finally put in a little bottom here and has a bigger bounce, that could finally cause that correction pullback we've been looking for in the precious metals. So, again, it's too early to say if wave five is in, but we do have some divergence building. And you can see clear five waves down and a tight little downtrend channel. Chapter 52, here's the weekly chart. Remember, we favored that last bounce a couple weeks ago as a wave four. We were looking for another move down in a wave five, and that's been playing out. There's big support down around this area, around, around the 99 area. And chart for 53, here's the monthly chart of the dollar. Remember, we drew this chart way back in 2022, marking this as a wave five top in this, uh, in this uptrend channel. And this has been playing out. Now, could the dollar eventually come to the lower portion of the channel here? Perhaps. We'll see. Next. Chapter 54, here's gold. Gold kind of all over the place today. You can see kind of a, essentially a doji candlestick, indecision candle. Still have this potential wedge. We still have this MACD divergence. And despite the fact that ES futures are recovered quite a bit tonight, Gold futures have not. So if that dollar, US dollar puts in a bottom with that fifth wave divergence, that could finally cause a pullback in gold that we've been looking for. Chapter 55, here's gold in the weekly. Remember, we've been showing this count for quite a long time, this nested one, two, one, two. We've been working on this wave five of three. So once this is finally complete, it could have completed today. It may not have. But it could have. Once we're, this completes, we're looking at a deeper pullback in a wave four. You got a big demand zone down here. But remember, guys, this would be a wave four. So this is in a long term uptrend. We'd be looking for eventually then a new all time high. But I am looking for an eventual pullback in this area. Driver 56, here's the silver pullback as well. They'll bounced off the nine EMA today. You got a couple higher, you get a couple higher lows in place here. And chart for 57, here's the monthly chart. Still up 5% for the month. To me, this chart still looks super bullish, though. You know, if you're long-term and you can just set out the little wiggles, I think one could just stay long silver. Again, if you're a trader, you might not be able to handle that. But I think if you're a longer-term guy and you didn't want to look at it, I think silver works much higher over time. But it would likely have a pullback with gold if we get that here uh, sometime soon.
Next. Chapter 58, here's Palladium. Down slightly this week. Remember the previous week, it broke out of that nice bottoming pattern. I do like Palladium here because unlike gold, it's been underperforming. But if this, this could potentially start a major uptrend. The fact is trying to come out of this nice long-term base. Chapter 59, here's the tradable ETF PALL. You can see nice breakout last week, little pullback so far. The broken trend line in this pattern is now support. Notice you have a couple supply zones above that could be your next targets. Moving average ribbon is very tightly wound here. That's when you can get your big moves. It's been in a bearish configuration since 2022, but you can see it's trying to curl up and revert to a bullish configuration. That's why to me, this has pretty interesting swing long potential. That said, big pullback today in Palladium down 5.6%. Not surprising though, guys, look, it was trading outside its upper Bollinger Bands for five consecutive days. One, two, three, four, five. Look how wide that moving average ribbon. That was just too extreme. It needed to revert back to the mean, and that's what it's doing. And even with today's big pullback, it's still above the 9 EMA. So to me, this is just a logical pullback working off some of that overbought. Still looks okay otherwise on the bigger picture charts. Next, driver 61. Here's GDX, gold miners. You can see it was up today initially before a big reversal. Yes, it's still above its 9 and 20 MAs, but big reversal there. And GDX, the miners, are underperforming the metal, which is a warning. They tend to lead. Chapter 62, here's the 60-minute chart of GDX. You can see it, it did spike up today for a new high, set up a pretty good MACD divergence on that spike before reversing back. Chapter 63, should we get a correction in this area? Dust, that's the Two-time inverse ETF for the miners. You could see this potential wedge forming. We bounced right at the lower portion of the wedge. You could take a long position here with a stop, essentially right at today's lows or below the lower trend line. Notice you have a double MACD divergence here. So this is one to watch should this area have a correction finally. And finally, moving on to our trade ideas, guys. So OSCR, it's been on our list since early last week, had a breakaway gap, and it's been a hell of a trade out of this coil pattern. This is a great example of the moving average ribbon. It was tightly wound there. You see that? And it produced a big move. That said, we're up into this resistance area. It's an area to consider taking some profits if you haven't done so. Chapter 65, pizza, Papa John's. Was up again today before reversing, but it's been a nice trade out of this tight coil. This was a long idea from the weekend. Congrats if you took it. Chapter 66, Nova, another one from the weekend. Nice breakout early this week. Yes, it was up today again. You could have taken some profits before reversing. Chart still looks okay, though. Chapter 67, C-O-R-Z. Another beauty, one that triggered last week out of this tight coil. Notice how the moving average ribbon was really tight there. Love it when the moving average ribbon is tight. It produces these nice moves. Chapter 68, Flute. Another beauty. Triggered a couple weeks ago. It's Really had a great move here. Hope you took some profits. Jabber 69, Intel. Last week, I had a, lighted a low risk trade off the bottom of this horizontal rectangle pattern. You could have put a very tight stop there, risked very little, and you had a great move to the top of the range. And you could have taken some profits there for a great trade. You may still hold some shares, which is fine. Now we'll see if this can form a higher low. Jabber 70, Chubb. Still holding in here. Again, if I was still long this, I'd put a, have a swing stop at the widest at that higher low. Driver 71, forward. Nice long idea that triggered last week. Still holding up here well. Driver 72, Dollar General. This is the monthly chart so far, up 4.7% this month. A couple weeks ago, I highlighted this as a a uh, bungee bounce play. It was quite oversold into this demand zone. I thought it looked lower risk. And so far, that's what it's doing. It's trying to bounce here a little bit. Chapter 73, here's the daily. This was our trigger two weeks ago. Right off this tight doji. Trigger long was above the high of the doji with a stop at the low. You would have never stopped out. You had to be patient. But this has played out. My initial target was the 9 EMA here. And 
my next target would be the 20. Chapter 74, YUMC. When it's been on the list, pulling back today, still holding in here. Again, if you know, I'm still long a little bit of this. I'm just giving it a little room, but I'd like to see this pop higher, maybe to fill that gap above 200 day moving average. Chapter 75, Chesapeake Energy, one I showed last week, this double bottom. It's more of a natural gas play. It's holding up very well here. It's had a nice correction too from the May high, so it seems low risk. Chapter 76, GPN, Global Payments. Another long idea, a little pullback today, otherwise still looks okay. Chapter 77, Gurn, one that has not triggered. Notice it keeps testing the downtrend line. It's tested this so many times, really confirming that is important resistance. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. Chapter 78, BYON, um, never triggered above that 1220 area, but it is trying to hold these moving averages. So let's look at an intraday chart. Chapter 79, here's the intraday chart. So I highlighted this kind of as an education. The fact on the daily you'd pull back to the moving averages, you have a potential completed ABC into this demand zone. So to me, I thought it was a low risk entry there, which it was. It did bounce today before pulling back with the market. And Charber 80, here's DSL. That's that monthly dividend pay. It's very consistent. And um, honestly, this was best to buy back in May and April and just hold it and receive the stock gain and the monthly dividends. But even if you bought it the last couple of days, you, you still made money a little bit on the stock. And of course, you now receive the dividend. Remember, today's the ex-dividend date. So you got to wait till next month to get the next one. And chart 81, here's RINC, another dividend play I mentioned. This one pays monthly as well. Chart still looks pretty fantastic. So I own some of this as well. Remember, we have that dividend list resource, which is right here. So again, I would take a look at this very good resource. These are all great dividend plays. I have it sorted into monthly and quarterly. Also provide all these hyperlinks. I've shared the Google Doc with you so you can utilize that resource. All right, guys, let's see what happens overnight and tomorrow, of course. Have a wonderful evening. Take care.